Hey, it's Dr. Dunaway with Cairo Strength talking today about mobility drills to improve SI joint pain or function. So it's important to understand kind of what's going on at the SI joint and how it's structured so we get a better idea of why we need this mobility. So uh, if you look at the SI joint, it kind of looks like two fists coming together, meaning there's a bunch of grooves on each side of the joint that they fit together like this because it has to be very strong. The SI joint should not move but a couple millimeters and that's because the stress of the torso is coming down like this and as the stress is coming down the legs are doing this so there's a lot of shearing force that happens in the SI joint. So typically when it's painful it's not that it's not moving enough it's that it's moving too much. So um, I, I would suggest that first staying away from trying to mobilize the low back or the SI joint and get um, more focused on hip mobility because a lack of hip mobility will create a hypermobile or a SI joint that moves too much. And so I typically start off with some soft tissue work prior to doing the stretches. And, and we're gonna go through three stretches. And as far as the soft tissue work goes, typically what I do is we'll work right, so you, get, you find that kind of ball, that bony point right there in your hip, come right behind that, and then you're gonna get in this figure four stance and just allow that hip to kind of lay over that ball and really allow that joint um, just to kind of work a lot of posterior musculature here. And then we're gonna work the rim of the pelvis here. So if you put your hands like this, you'll feel a bone there. And if you kind of work along just below that bone, you'll feel the attachments of the glute max. And then if you come down a little bit more towards here, you'll feel the glute med. And so what I want to do there is just allow this ball to kind of sink in along the rim of that pelvis because oftentimes those will reproduce the pain symptoms and just hanging out on those for anywhere from 5 to 20 seconds a piece will allow you to rehydrate those tissues to respond better to soft tissue work. So you got the posterior hip right here, you got the glute med and the, and the uh, rim of the pelvis and then we're going to go in to the adductors right here and if you kind of lift your leg up like this you should feel a common adductor tendon and the common adductor tendon you want to stay either on it or behind it because once you start coming up in this region that's where your femoral, femoral artery is your femoral nerve and there's a lot of vasculature and lymph vessel there so don't do any soft tissue work where you're pressing down in the hip right here um, and it's kind of in between if you put your leg straight up you'll feel the rectus femoris and your adductors that little divot right there uh, we want to stay away from so when I put the ball on that common tendon of the adductors I'm going to get us again, tennis ball, lacrosse ball. This is a yoga tuna ball. I like the density of that because it's not too bad or not too uh, stressful on the tissues. I'm going to sink into that common, that common tendon right there. And then I'm going to use this kettlebell so I can just relax that leg. And then I can use this kettlebell to kind of drive the force. And I'm just going to do some soft tissue work. If I get kind of posterior to the adductors and kind of start getting in right off of the pelvis where the... Uh, right where the uh, hamstrings come in, I can kind of pump my leg back and forth like this and get some good relative motion between the hamstrings and the, and the common adductor tendon, which tends to kind of get gummed up and prevents you from getting those hips spread out. So after that, after some soft tissue work, there's gonna be three stretches. One I'm gonna do on the wall, and it's gonna look like a figure four stretch. Feet up on the wall right here, and then slowly let the leg fall down, and you can kind of push a little bit on that leg and now it's important to understand as you're doing that and you're sliding that leg down the wall your pelvis isn't coming up like this pelvis stays down and you move only from the hip the next one's going to be the tactical frog the tactical frog I'm going to spread my knees as wide as possible from the side view it's going to look like my ankles lined up with my knee chest up and I'm just going to rock back rock back for about 30 seconds to a minute I'm going to hold this back um, that hold this kind of rocked back position. I'm going to kind of just wag my tail a little bit. That'll kind of open up the hips. Then I'm going to come down onto all fours, spend another 30 seconds to a minute here, and then kind of wag the tail, loosen that up. And then I'm going to come out into this stretch right here and still get a real good kind of stretch between the hamstring and adductors. And that all of that combines the tactical frog. Um, in between the tactical frog, I'll come up out of that and just do some hip extension because when we're here and so much hip flexion, we need to kind of offset that a little bit. So what you see, what you've seen there is the soft tissue work and then three stretches. Typically with the soft tissue work, I don't stay in one area for more than say 30 seconds to a minute. Um, 
And all you're trying to do is, re, is hydrate the tissues and get them prepared to stretch so they'll respond better. And then you got the figure four stretch on the wall, different, uh, and then kind of going back and forth between the tactical frog variations and the hip extension. I would spend about a 15 minute routine doing that on a regular basis to improve that hip mobility. And then you're gonna have to, we didn't talk about any type of balance or stability drills to kind of activate the glutes um, to de-stress that uh, SI joint. So there's, there's more steps involved here, but this is a good start. If you have any questions for me specifically, you can leave them in the comments below or email me at drdunaway at chirostrength.com and I'd be happy to answer any of those questions. But until then, it's Dr. Dunaway with Cairo Strength saying don't just mend, transcend. Thanks.